I didn't think much of myself. And so the world didn't think much of me. That lined up. You know, just one of those breakups that really, you know, it was like a tough one for me for whatever. So it looks like JLo is done saying quite about the deprecable things that did he force her to do while they were together because she just spilled some major tea about how did he use to mistreat her and set her up into having sessions with him he was reportedly mistreating JLo both physically and mentally the reason why she was able to escape the relationship was because she didn't actually need Diddy in order to have a career she was a very big artist at the time so she had a lot of people willing to back her up to help her get out of that toxic relationship now unfortunately this wasn't the case for a lot of diddy other victims and that's why he was able to get away with so many things crazy things is a lot of people didn't even realize jello was one of the victims until just a few weeks ago when she dropped her highly anticipated documentary the greatest love story never told jello reveal in the documentary that she was stuck in a toxic relationship at one point she said she was severely manhandled by a particular ex of hers and he even forced her into doing some unsavory things that she until traumatized by to this day she said being thrown around a manhandled like that is not fun i'll be definitely being manhandled and a couple of other unsavory things rough disrespectful i'm glad that one behind us even thought she was didn't name job diddy it doesn't take rocket science to figure out who she talking about people also found the timing of this revolution very interesting since she did decide to spill the tea about this around the same time that Diddy is actively being exposed for a being a monster to add up to that there have been rumors from both fans and people that used to work for Diddy at the time that he and JLO were together claiming that he used to actively cheat on her put his hands on her and even drag her by hair in fact Diddy ex bodyguard Jan Deal revealed a while ago that Diddy would sometime leave JLO in the house to go looking for Kim Porter so they could hook up he said Diddy would get really jealous every time he would find Kim with somebody else and would intimate it them into leaving Kim alone and he'll call and Kim wouldn't answer and if she was out he would ask the babysitter, you know, do you know where she at? Well, she said she was going to be here because she had Kristen at the time. You know what I mean? So now we go on where Kim is at. And if she was with somebody, he made it very uncomfortable for that person to be with. Using the bodyguard. And remember how he said earlier that Diddy used to manipulate JLo into his little parties? Well, it turns out that word had spread around the industry that he was using JLo at these parties. Jan claims there was a time that Will Smith at Jada attempted to seduce JLo into hooking up with them. However, Diddy got really upset and threatened to mess well up if he and Jada went any further. Apparently, he's only okay with people getting intimate with JLo when he's the one initiating the freak off. Party that I think either Matt Damien was given for Ben Affleck. It was just a little gathering. They was at the Four Seasons. Will Smith and his sister and her husband, we were all sitting on this side of the room. Matt Damien, uh, Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez, Puff, Will Smith, and uh, Jada, and they were sitting on the other. Up. When he stood up, he walked and like and did his own some some kind of way, like, and then he went like this, you know, like that. I went over towards him. I know to go over there towards him, so I go over towards him, and he said to me, he said, "Yo, I think Will and Jada." is trying to scoop up Jennifer. I want you to stay close 
because I'm a snuff. Now back to the allegation about Didi putting his hand on JLO. There was also a scene in her documentary where she and a man reenacted at a time in her life where her ex was being physically aggressive toward her. The scene was a reconnected of something she actually went through and she looked visibly troubled during it when she was asked about the scene. She said the idea of the glass house was about how we get into these toxic relationships. You have trauma from your past. You have these patterns. You haven't figured out yet and you get into this relationship where you compromise yourself in ways you never thought would you ever allow people to treat you in a ways that you never thought you would be and a baby she was not lying when she had she allowed Didi to treat her in ways she never thought she would because that exactly what happened he pretty much had full control over her saw JLO as nothing more than a product that he owned now going back to Jan deal he also said that Didi would sometimes bring over both men and women in the house that he lived in with JLO there was even a point where he dunking crying is tend to give him you know what while JLO was upstairs and if it was upstairs he was down there getting a the fillet from him did she ever find out she know now and you said the female name was Karen yeah super head Oh, okay, Karen Stephens. You got to say the full name, man. Yeah, I thought... But it wasn't just the freak off and divide that Jello was putting up with Didi also made her an implies to a crime that I committed and she had to carry that secret with her for years. It's all happened back on December 28, 1999, while Didi and Jello were clubbing in New York. They were there to celebrate Shine soon to be released studio album. At the time, Shy was signed to Didi record label Bad Boy Entertainment. So this was a pretty big deal for both Didi and Shine. However, things gone pretty dark later that night after Didi bumped into the man named Matthew Allen who was very popular for this street name Scar and accidentally spilled his drink all over him. Even thought this was an accident. Scar was not having that and he started talking to Didi a little reckless now at the point. Didi also got very upset and threw his money at his car like confetti. There were also reports that Scar was the one who those fat rubber band stacks at Didi. But you get the point. They were both having some alpha off and trying to dominate one another another. If you ask me either why this had to be a win for the people at the club because they immediately bent over and started grabbing as much money as they could. The conflict accelerated and rounds went off on illegally coming from Puffy 3 of the club patrons where injured one woman was hit in the face. JLO and Didi spent away in the 1999 Lachlan Navigator bat run a red light and were pulled over by the police. They were a possession of a stolen you know what which was found in the trunk. They were arrested and spent the next 14 hours in a cell where JLO was reportedly crying uncontrollably and the charges were eventually dropped for both them but their relationship started going south that point interestingly enough shine took to fall for Didi and ended up in a jail for nine years people speculate that he paid shine a hefty sum of money to take the fall for that crime and shine being naive and desperate for some quick cash agreed to it and wasted nearly half a decade for his life in jail and do you all remember how i said he had a woman in the face well she recently got on tiktok after all these years and confirmed that Ditty was the one who committed the crime not shine i am the woman who he sh in the face in that 1999, December 27th, 1999, Club New York. I have told everyone ad nauseum since then, even the surgeon who did the surgery to take the I got in my face with a nine millimeter, excuse me, nine millimeter hollow point. Call the cop. I literally have told everyone and never changed what I said. I watched him 
I got pow pow in the face. I watched him fire. The I've said it all this time. To add up to all this, Lil Root, the man recently sued Diddy, also said in his lawsuit that Diddy was shamelessly bragging to him about how to got away with all of it and made somebody else. Take the fall now. JLO eventually broke up with Diddy in 2001 and she became a free woman again but get this just about a year. After this breakup, she released a movie about a woman who was caught up in an ad relationship and eventually runs away from her husband. A lot of people believe that this film was inspired by jail relationship with Diddy and how she eventually survived. In fact, during the filming of this movie, things gone so intense for her that she had multiple mental breakdowns. I did have a kind of nervous breakdown. I froze up on set well not on a set but in my trailer i was like i don't want to move i don't want to talk i don't want to do anything it was on that movie enough yeah i did i had a nervous breakdown so as you all can see did he really put jlo through the lot and she one of the few people who was able to actually get away from him but even with that she still suffer from the trauma that she endured and she gives us lots of things in her movie and documentaries but even thought people feel bad for her other people also put her on blast for not revealing all this earlier and watching an innocent man take the fall for a crime that she knew he didn't commit JLO is still very scared of Diddy and I don't blame her he can still go after her and hurt this man hurts blood on his hands and this point a little bit more won't matter but now I want to know your thoughts what do you all think about JLO finally speaking up about what did he put her through and do you all think she should also a charge as a, a compliance or has she just scared and a victim like everybody else you've been even what to do let me know your thoughts in the comment section down